Hello everybody. Uh, in the following you are going to see the recording of the last session. This took place on April 21 where we have discussed technical issues as well as the formal introduction into the topic on climate change and climate justice. For all those that have not been able to hear me due to technical obstacles and for those who want to watch it again and those which have not had time for taking part in the session, this recording is made and I hope you're going to enjoy it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to let me know. So hello everybody. Um, I hope everyone was able uh, to also check audio connection. Um, if anyone cannot hear me by now, please give a short notice in the chat room below. Okay, so I think everyone can hear me. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for coming in. Um, this is a pilot project which has been developed in the last semester based on exchanges with academics in uh, Canada at UBC and at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, but spread out widely. And now I think we are covering quite a range of people from different origins, uh, even from Italy. So uh, I personally believe this is quite an advanced project in terms of interdisciplinarity and internationality. And I really hope for a very positive achievement, which we are going to, to do in the following semester. Um, in the beginning, I, I would like to check with every one of you um, the audio connection and I will briefly explain the basics, how everything is working in case not everyone, if you had time for watching the YouTube video or uh, having a look for the detailed handout, which I've sent around. Um, the most important thing you can see is on top. It is um, you have um, and speaker symbol, I gave you a um, webcam symbol and you have this little figure which means set status. So um, in order to let me know that anything is going wrong, that you cannot follow up or something else is happening, you simply click on this uh, drop down menu and raise your hand. I would like to start with this uh, that everyone of you is just once clicking on this and raises his or her hand so that I can see that everyone can hear me properly and everything is, is working fine. Okay, there is, yes, okay, this was obviously the last one. Wonderful, great. Um, well, I can decline everything or you just unraise your hand by doing the same again. Um, this is great. This is a very important tool. Um, as you can see from the environment and as you will learn in the session, what we are going to do today is uh, a lot of things are possible in the virtual classroom. A lot of things are not possible in the virtual classroom. One thing which is not possible in the virtual classroom is uh, that every one of us um, has speaking rights. The cacophony of, of, lang of languages talking and so forth will confuse everyone, but um, it will be that uh, each of you will get speaking rights in terms of a presentation. By this, you will also see a symbol on top, uh, on top which you can activate and then your microphone will be enabled. In the beginning now, I would like to introduce you a little bit into um, these um, features of uh, the environment. Um, as I've learned from my research stays in Australia and in uh, Canada and in Israel, um, the first name using in classrooms is more um, common. And I would like to introduce this here as well as we have an English language class. So. Um, I'm comfortable with you addressing me as my with my first name and I will address you with your first name if this is okay for you. If not, please just let me know. 
Um, the first thing what all we all have to do is um, to run through this audio setup wizard. Um, who has not done the audio wizard so far? So far, please raise hand. Okay. Okay, quite a few. Fair enough. Uh, you can unraise or I can do this for you. Okay, great. Um, so you are going on top to the tab which says meeting and down there to audio setup wizard. If you click on this, a new window is opening, welcoming you. And there you see cancel or next. And obviously you go for next. The next thing what is going to happen is you can play a sound to check whether your speakers are working. Since you are, you can hear me, I believe this is already functioning. So uh, you can go to next then. And there you could, could select a microphone if you have more than one. If you just have one, this is the one which will be displayed in this little uh, button. Okay. We have a question. Johanna should now have um, speaking rights and if you enable your microphone, you are able to ask a question. No, I did not mute myself. Um, actually, all the rest should have been able to hear me. Uh, so you can hear me now. And before you could not, before I gave you speaking rights. These are one of the many things what we are going to experience here in this, um, uh, in this environment. Um, technical issues may occur all the time. It may also be that someone drops out, even me. Uh, internet is never stable. So if th something like this uh, happen, um, it's like the emergency rule, calm and wait. And usually everyone can log in again and then we just continue. So it's, it's not of a big issue. Um, okay, now everyone can hear me. Um, the other thing which I have addressed already um, is that every lesson we are going to have here will be recorded. Um, this is for the purpose of taking the most out of the tool we are using uh, in terms of e-learning. So our recording will be placed um, on Blackboard that someone who could not attend has the possibility to look it up again. Um, and the other thing is also we are going to have some acknowledged speakers here which I'm going to record and which should be used also for further e-learnings, so-called webinars. Um, so this is just for your information that you know that uh, we are recording this um, and every session is recorded and shall then be used um, for further training purposes, maybe also in other countries. So. As we have seen by practice right now, if you raise your hand and I give you speaking rights, everyone can hear. And there are also other possibilities to create groups uh, in the following where uh, you can work together with other, others, where each of you is going to have speaking rights and so forth. But these are just some of the tools. Um, in the following, I'm going to walk you through this small presentation which I've created. Um, it contains mainly basic information which are important for each of you. Each of you might be here for a different purpose. Some want to get a grade, others just want to participate and so forth. Um, internationality has these ob obstacles. By now I have always been able to resolve such problems. Uh, you can also come to um, the consultation hours where is, which is another room which you have seen by entering which also was explained in the YouTube clip. Uh, there we can also discuss such personal matters. Okay, climate change and climate justice. The topic actually came uh, out of my postdoc project, which ran since 2012, but goes beyond. We are going to uh, find out about uh, the definition and discourses on climate change and the relevance of the climate justice debate as part of climate governance and vulnerability. I will try with help of the colleagues who have agreed to hold a presentation here to give you a broad overview of what is discussed as climate change and how climate change can be seen and what kind of 
uh, variables play an important role in analyzing climate governance. So as you can see in the list of content, um, we start with the technical issues and introduction. Um, this also plays an important role, uh, which is why I said that someone who has not attended to the first session cannot join later easily because if you don't understand the learning environment properly, it's very, very difficult um, to really benefit from it and make the interaction with each other possible. As you may have found out by yourself already, you can also uh, write someone else personally in the chat room. The idea for you doing this is um, to make contact to other people um, and maybe establish collaborations alongside of the topic we are discussing anyways. And the second step, I'm going to show you the course syllabus. Um, I'm going to explain you what you need to do for getting a grade. And uh, then we could discuss who is going to take which presentation or commenting, as I'm going to explain. At the very end of the session today, I will briefly explain um, central concepts which I think are important for us to uh, base our debates on. Won't be long, but uh, we have people for, with different background, different disciplines, so I thought creating kind of a common knowledge base might be good and might be important for profitable debates of the future. As I said, if you have any questions, if you think I'm speaking too fast, if something is unclear, just raise your hand, let me know. Um, if not, I'm just going to continue. Okay, the technical issues we have resolved. So please have a look um, at the course syllabus. I must say that not every information what I have uh, wanted to receive, I have received so far. Uh, with my colleague from Hebrew University, Itai Fischhandler, I have agreed that he's going to have a presentation as well, but uh, we haven't had time for uh, finding a date so this will squeeze in later on, um, but the presentations as the, uh, they are listed there are going to take place. As you can see, uh, you have beside the date and the time, um, the presenter, the topic and the dates where uh, your commitment is asked. The time I would like to point to the day of May 26. Uh, John is going to have a, hold a presentation on democracy and climate change. I don't know who of you knows John Dreisig. Um, he wrote a very famous book in 1994, uh, Politics on Earth, and he works a lot on deliberative politics, and uh, he is in Canberra at Canberra University. Since we are working with quite a time difference, um, it was necessary to move this session to the morning. Uh, who of you is not able to take part? This is absolutely okay. Um, we will record the session. You will be able to watch it um, to follow up. But uh, in case you want to join uh, and you have time, um, this would be mostly appreciated because I hope to have uh, a fruitful debate with uh, John Dreisig about all these topics which he thinks are relevant, like is climate change uh, uh, a danger for democracy and so forth. Uh, we have um, the first session next week uh, is going to be an, an introduction which I'm going to give on the discourses of climate change uh, with perspective on multi-level governance. This shall be the guideline for our seminar. Uh, the different discourses existing shall be then compared with cases and, so, and uh, as part of the history uh, of the debate on climate change negotiations and climate mitigation strategies. On May 12th, we are going to have a presentation of uh, Arivaldo Santos de Souza. He's a colleague of mine whom I know since the time when I wrote my PhD. He is a specialist on environmental justice and environmental justice movement in Brazil. And uh, he held already one presentation in the last semester and uh, he's going to speak on climate justice in Brazil. Francesca Rosignoni, she's um, a PhD student from Italy. Um, working on theories of justice um, is going to introduce to the topic of uh, like the justice perspective in uh, like the relevance of a proper theory of justice uh, in terms of climate change. 
And after that, I mean, after the presentation of John, uh, I look forward to your presentations. So we have uh, a topic on climate change policies and discourses in Canada and a walk through history uh, from uh, the Earth Summit 1992 or the Spirit of Rio to climate change uh, negotiations as part of Kyoto Protocol and the Aarhus Convention, Rio plus 10 and COP19 in Copenhagen and finally the agreement uh, last year in Paris of COP21. The sessions on July 7th and July 14th will focus on methods. Um, uh, the Free University, this um, seminar is listed as a methodological seminar, so learning about methods uh, was required, but also is very interesting and important, I think, in analyzing the discourses, because I would like to show you a bit on like how methods which are used in a certain way frame the way how climate change is perceived and seen and discussed. At the last session, we are going to have um, a large teaching evaluation, I hope, uh, within this classroom. This was promised by the administration of the Free University. Additionally, I uh, will do kind of a small research project in which I hope you are going to be participants. I have worked um, a long time and in my PhD with a method called Q methodology and there is a, a range of researches right now going on uh, regarding the perception of e-learning in uh, academia. And I would like to have you taking part in a small research, which I'm going to analyze then with help of this Q methodology, which I hope then will uh, be published and make this type of um, e-learning or type of teaching more um, common as it is right now. Okay, I read the chat. Um, has every, everybody been able to follow up even though you had uh, connection issues? As I said, this may occur. Okay, I, I think so. Um, coming to the course requirements. For sure, active participation is required for successfully finishing the course. And you have two options um, for that, what is called in German eine Studienleistung, uh, like uh, the basic, the basic uh, contribution from your side, uh, is either a presentation of one of the seven or commenting on two of the four presentations which are done by someone else. The idea is here that if you choose to do this, you are uh, like focusing on the text, which is uh, recommended or required by the presenters. And you prepare kind of interesting or critical questions uh, based on the text and based on the presentation itself. This idea actually is kind of the new didactical method to say um, it is important to have someone who has like taken a lot of time focusing only on the presentation of someone who is invited to talk because this makes the discussion itself more vivid. So one of the two things uh, you can choose to do. Finally, if you wanna have a great um, a term paper of 10 to 12 pages, are required due to September 30. You can write these papers in English, German or Portuguese are the language which I'm able to read and able to correct. Addition, additionally to these course requirements, you are going to get if uh, at the end of this, uh, of this seminar, uh, your certificate for sure and a certificate uh, saying that you have taken part in a virtual classroom you know or you may not know uh, virtual classroom trainings became quite prominent in the industry uh, only the academic world is a little bit lagging behind in germany more than in other countries but it is like this so uh, the idea of uh, 
providing an extra certificate saying this is in order to help you maybe for your curriculum, for your CV. Um, so this is what you are going to get by participating in this course. So you're going, you're going to find like the course syllabus with your names um, on the blackboard. I'm going to show you where and at the end of, the, of this presentation. So um, you will find like your names here on uh, in the student's commitments, where's name one, name one, name two, name two, and so forth. They will be your names and then you can check and if I did anything wrong, I misunderstood and somehow you just let me know and we, we correct it. Um, wonderful. If there are no, no further questions, I will start introducing into the topic, which it's a little bit too much to say because I'm rather introducing some frames and concepts um, which I think are important to take into consideration when dealing with the question of climate change. So climate change um, as a topic of discourses are going to be, discuss be discussed next week. The one model I would like to show you is the one of Joseph Huber. Um, it was also adopted in Brazil by the famous sociologist Axelrod. Um, it is the five phases model on uh, the development of environmental movements. I would like you to note down or take into consideration the phases which he has developed because it plays in my opinion quite an important role in understanding the different discourses which have emerged and play a role until today on framing climate change. So according to Joseph Huber, um, the development of environmental movements started in the 1960s. The 1960s also have been the years when this famous book um, of Paul and Anna Ehrlich, The Population Bomb has uh, been published and the debate on the um, limits of natural resources came up. The emergence of uh, the environmental movement is therefore dated for the years from 1960 to 1972. And 1972 also was this uh, book published, the report for the Club of Rome, Limits to Growth of Meadows, which is kind of the starting point for the political debate on uh, environmental problems in the world brought it to the to the international table as he said um, in the years later on there was kind of a boost phase in the 70s to the beginning 80s you see kind of a different dating uh, sometimes like in the second phase from 1973 to 1982 or 83, this refers to different years used by Huber versus Axelrod, but um, as I found is like they are using the same frame. So it's basically the same, maybe a little influenced by uh, national differences in the role of um, everything. So the boost phase was when uh, environmental movements grew all over the world, a lot of important environmental movements have been created at this time. Also, the environmental justice movement um, has been developed at these times. And from the 1980s on, um, he speaks about a transition in, in terms of an institutionalization of uh, the environmental movements. A lot of NGOs became big enough to play an important role. In Germany, for example, NGOs, if they are big enough, have uh, are heard in the Bundestag uh, in when some laws are, are um, agreed. So this transition institutionalized the NGOs from purely grassroots to something being part of the legislative system. From the 1990s on, um, they speak about an assimilation, like they have been institutionalized to the degree that uh, their viewpoints could are not have not been so different anymore from positions found in parties and uh, different political options whereas like in the first phase and the boost phase also 
um, influenced by by movements like the Black Panther and so forth. A lot of movements appeared which have been very critical to the system, to capitalism in general. During the assimilation phase, all this environmental movement has been like institutionalized and uh, started working within the existing frame for bettering uh, environmental law and so forth. So their uh, conclusion is that since 2000, we see a decay uh, of environmental movements. So they are, they are reduced in importance and they are starting to vanish. Whether this is true or not is uh, a question of perspective. Um, arguments go for and back, forth and back and also say, speak about a sixth step. Uh, but I have not put this in because the basic structure uh, is pretty important for us when we are looking at the development of, uh, of climate change as a problem set and taking into consideration these different steps may help us. As I said, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. Just let me know. The other aspect we are going to deal with uh, during the seminar is um, climate justice. Climate justice is not environmental justice, but is the attempt to uh, bring in environmental justice concerns to um, climate change questions. Environmental justice has a bare definition, which is contested for sure. I have tried to summarize some things where actually no one would totally disagree with. Um, so the conception of environmental justice entails the distribution of environmental goods and environmental bads like pollution, uh, the environmental risk. Um, and sorry, I have not translated <laughs> everything here. It's, I'm sorry. Um, so it, there are like two basic concepts. One is the environmental justice and the environmental racism. So when we speak about climate change, uh, we have a concept which is more defined by the establishment and when we speak about climate justice we have again a lot of um, grassroots groups which come in with other aspects which they see not as considered in the global debate so far. The definition of environmental justice uh, compared to climate justice and climate change is not very well developed in the academic world. It is an ongoing debate but there's nothing decided. Um, we will may have a look in one or the other uh, text, but uh, like defining this uh, is not, not our goal by now. The last thing which I would like to show you is beside the two concepts which play a major role, the Nimbai and Nyabi um, is a kind of an overview of like how um, sustainability is perceived. Uh, this is a little bit like the question of like what to uh, to put into uh, into account mainly uh, either like uh, your backyard or the whole world. This also is is uh, considered in concepts like locality uh, and in the climate change it certainly plays an important role um, as we are going to see when looking at uh, different cases. So. Um, this frame, some of you who have joined uh, my class last semester have seen it already. Um, it is too much to say it's an, an environmental justice frame. It's basically a, an attempt to create a map of different perceptions in the context of sustainability. But we see um, that basically um, the different perspectives um, are framed by the concern regarding equality versus uh, inequality or what is said like necessities of the economy and uh, on, on the one hand side and on the other side uh, the environmental concern um, which covers a broad range of opinions. Um, I think this um, overview, even though more than 10 years old by now, is a very important principle idea of uh, looking at environmental concepts. So when we are thinking about climate change, the question is always like what kind of climate change and 
who is affected and how. So depending of how you are affected uh, by climate change, you will have a different opinion on it and you will see different necessities for doing one or the other. Would you like to comment on any of this, what you seen in this mapping? So this would be the interesting question. I would like to strengthen the following in as much like the climate justice debate can be localized within this map somewhere where environmental justice is or rather not. I actually don't know, um, but it will be interesting for me to have this also in discussion with the experts which have agreed to, to have a presentation in uh, the virtual classroom. Okay, this basically was my presentation and uh, introduction for you. Would you have any further questions which you want to ask now? I see. Okay, Merlin. Okay, it is, it is very hard to say what the Institute thinks about it. I would prefer to say what I think about it because um, when you look at the list of the people uh, associated with the Environmental Justice Institute, you see people from very, very different disciplines, uh, very, very different countries, and therefore certainly very different perspectives. Basically what environmental justice concerns have all in common is the consideration that um, a climate change problem uh, is a, at the very end of the day, a justice problem. It is. Uh, however we define justice, it is not that climate change has an effect on everyone in the same way. And the basic assumption uh, is that um, mostly we have uh, a social uh, determinators which make likeliness of suffering from impacts of climate change much higher for those which are socially deprived, um, discriminated by ethnicity, gender and so forth. Um, so um, the basic understanding is that these concerns are less considered in the mainstream debate as they should be. From my personal perspective, um, climate change is not much different to um, biodiversity or uh, sustainable development uh, or sustainability because in my opinion, climate change is only a concept of the many concepts in which we find a representation of uh, a lot of different discourses, which try to um, define the concept according to their priorities. So what I personally believe is that uh, climate change um, is a word which came, became quite famous due to uh, the fact that the changes in the climate have an impact to a lot of different stakeholder groups. But as Martinez Alia, for example, wrote, I mean, the, the suffering from climate or environmental impacts of a lot of uh, deprived people in the world is much older than our debate about it. So it became quite important since economy sees a major threat uh, in that what is happening and you can see this for example when you look at the global risk report uh, which uh, also provides uh, like likeliness of uh, for, for the existing economic uh, structure which we are having so I personally see that um, if these powerful stakeholders um, are somehow targeted by the impacts of climate change they are going into the topic make it to a big topic and a discussion point and then we can again analyze um, the different groups involved in the global multi-level gover uh, governance process by looking at the concept. This makes the concept so special by today. This is my personal opinion. From the methodological viewpoint, again, I mean, um, I can only speak for myself because uh, I'm a sociologist and many others are coming from planning and uh, political science and would have a totally different focus. Um, in my opinion, uh, 
behavior studies and uh, um, looking at perceptions on the different levels is a very good way to uh, find out um, what climate change is for certain people. And if you also take into consideration geographic information system modeling, where you look at social variables and try to make a connection or compare a likeliness of opinion in, on the one hand side and social structure on the other side, maybe also um, a climatological indicators saying like if people live in the same areas of risky imp direct impacts of climate change and have a similar social status, they probably think similar. This is an interesting path to follow, but uh, I'm not so far that I could say that this is true, but these are just assumptions from which I, I would start. Well, this is an important question. I mean, I, I, I personally, I personally follow the the principle of Adorno to say that um, you cannot be not part of a political uh, process. I um, th I I personally see the Environmental Justice Institute as um, as a stakeholder in the academic world. Surely we, uh, the, the, what researchers do, we publish and also take influence on, uh, hopefully, uh, influence in the political sphere by consulting, for example, and so forth. But uh, at the point where we are right now, um, the Environmental Justice Institute um, has a focus on bringing one point into the debate in the academic world. And this, that's why this e-learning and this teaching plays the important role to say like, okay, um, we uh, cannot we cannot be involved in every process, but the, the process where we are good at is maybe the expertise in the academic debate. And there we can try to, to look for uh, alliances plus uh, like influencing the debate in the, uh, in the academic world, because they are also like quite distinct positions. So uh, when you read on the, on the website of the Environmental Justice Institute, we have kind of this best practice approach, which has de been developed by a colleague of mine with me, uh, where we tried based on Dreisig's article on uh, policy analysis as critic, uh, guidelines of like what should be researched uh, by policy analysis. Uh, this will be all, uh, one, like the original article will be, one, will be one text of this seminar as well. Then you may see a little bit the 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 frontier which uh, which i see between a lot of mainstream research and that what the environmental justice institute is trying to do and the other purpose is for sure to um find to find people which also do interesting research in this field and connect them and one of that what we are doing is for example this seminar what we're doing right now so if you make contact with other students or participants of the seminar, then one of the purposes of, of the Environmental Justice uh, Institute is served properly. Actually, everyone, everyone can, uh, can get a very good certificate by actively participating in this course, reading the texts, and uh, if you have read all the texts, uh, then you are certainly able to, to write a very good paper. It's uh, in, Germ in the German formal system, it's called the Bachelor Hauptseminar, which is like the advanced bachelor level. So I don't expect you to write a thesis. It's just um, an, an examination of a specific topic, um, uh, which ends with a, with a proper analysis and your own opinion, uh, referring to the um, bibliography, which we have used in this course, and a little bit of that, what, what others might have provided by their presentations. Basically, uh, it worked best for most of the people to focus on the topic that uh, they have chosen to present, but uh, I'm very open to every question which is related to the main topic of the of the course. So if you read the course description, you um, find a lot of anchors where you can start off. Uh, what I usually offer every participant of my course is to send me an abstract and a tentative list of content and uh, that we agree a little bit on the way how it's working and if you finish uh, the paper earlier than the deadline of september 30 
uh, I, if I am not overloaded with work here, um, I'm happy to give some feedback anyways, because the idea is a little bit that you learn how to how to work in this environment um, and to give you like the, the, ne the needed help you need for like uh, finding your way through this uh, list of literature and questions which are possible and necessary and so forth. Ah, okay. Yes, I can. Uh, as I said, like a presentation should take about uh, 30 minutes uh, plus a discussion of 15 minutes. Um, and usually every session uh, will entail an, either a, a small presentation or a, like working group arrangements and so forth. If there are no further questions, I would like you now to finally quickly show you where to find the materials. And we are doing so if you go on this link, course material, you basically uh, find everything in this course. First, the course timeline, and then the different presentations. And at the bottom, you find the literature. I have not uploaded everything by now, but I will do it at the weekend. Uh, everyone able to find the course material link and see the course timeline. If not, please raise hand. Okay. Or just agree like Isabel and Merlin. Um, you always have the possibility to write me an email. I think every one of you has my email already, but in case not, um, this is the email which works the best. Um, you can easily approach me there and we can arrange um, virtual consultation hours. So um, then I would close the session for today and I thank you very much for joining in. I hope uh, I will be able to upload also the record of uh, all this so David and all the others which could not hear it will at least there be able to hear it I hope and I look forward to um, our next meeting on next uh, Thursday and hope you enjoyed the meeting as I did and I wish you a good evening.